Okay, packed house, as I suspected, because no one on the planet wants to go hear Sean Kerner talk about security or Adrian Otto uh, talking about containers, because we're so tired of those things. Um, I, can but hardly, I can hardly contain myself. I, uh, um, so while I ask you guys a couple questions, because um, just so we can really tailor make this thing for you, because um, there's not that many of you today, although it will be it is shown recorded, to, so, exactly, yeah. shown to do you, do you want um, to use millions. The, the mouse. Oh, I'm only going to switch it once after this. I just thought we'd put up sort of our philosophy here for, um, <laughs> for you. But just a show of hands, who right now is running a community or managing a community or a community organizer of some sort? Okay, which community? Korea. You're the, you run the Korea User Group. Okay, what's your name? Ian Choi. Ian Choi? Oh, welcome, Mr. Choi. Okay, um, anyone else? All right, then, and, but how many have been to one of your local meetups? OpenStack meetups. Okay, just one. Okay. Uh, what, what geo area are you from? Uh, research Triangle. Oh, the Research Triangle. Okay. So, like the Raleigh meetup? RTP. RTP, is that what's called? Uh, yeah. Okay. Carolina. Good stuff. Um, okay. And let me ask, where are you from? Uh, DC. DC, okay. Mexico City. Mexico City, right on. And, sir? Orange County. Orange County. Oh, so Gary's well, here. No, no, right. no, no, no. He's somewhere in between. Oh. Yeah. Orange County people, they come down to San Diego. Here we go. Here you we don't go. want to go oh, live to Pasadena. Gonna we're going to start already, aren't we? Doesn't it depend on, okay, okay I'm going to have to separate these two. I think um, it has to do with traffic. And the time of day, I imagine. <laughs> if you did a breakfast meetup, maybe you'd have the opposite <laughs> situation. Um, and then one more. Sir, where are you from? Uh, well, which country? I'm sorry, what country are you from? No, like what? China. Oh, China. Okay, sorry, that's what I was getting at. Okay, China. So the China, China has lots of user groups. Um, Shanghai or Beijing? Uh, Beijing. Beijing? Okay. Okay, great. Um, and you walked in late. I was just asking people what uh, geographic area they're from. LA. From LA. Okay, so Gary would be your. You, have you been to Gary's meetup? She's my, she's my new oh, co-organizer. Okay. So co you snuck in after I said who was actually an organizer <laughs> of a... No, we were just trying to gauge if we were talking to people who were um, already running user groups and wanted maybe a little bit more information about how to do that, if you're looking for, to start a user group yourself. Um, or, or, you know, we've done this talk a few times before, and uh, so we like to make it a little bit different every time. And this time we're really focusing on, you know, if this is the year of the user and the year of adoption, what role do the user groups play in that? Um, and that's what we're going to focus on today. But I'm going to let my esteemed panelists introduce themselves. And if they don't say enough nice things about themselves, I will fill in. I pick them all because they're very different and they're very talented and I love them all. And they all run really amazing communities. So why don't we just go from this side to that side. John, will you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm uh, John Studeris. I run the OpenStack San Diego user group. Uh, we're official, um, official user group as of, uh, geez, I guess, six months ago. I've been running the group about a year. Uh, it was dormant when I picked it up. Um, my involvement with OpenStack, it, I actually uh, am not involved with a large company. I think you'll find out a couple of the other people are involved with, with large companies that use OpenStack. I have a small one-man shop uh, technology consulting business, mainly do security and compliance, and sort of run the OpenStack user group because it gives me a chance to get my hands dirty and actually dive into um, to using OpenStack and running things. So, um, you know, when I run the, the user group, I tend to focus things that are a little bit more hands-on because um, I find out I get a lot more uh, novice users, so. So when he says he gets his hands dirty, he gets his hands really dirty. They do, they do a hackathon or a workshop before every meetup down there in San Diego. So if you're ever in the San Diego area, make sure you look at his calendar and you can really get your hands dirty with OpenStack as well. Okay, Beth? Uh, so, so I'm... Um not one of the founders of Women of OpenStack, that was Ian Gentle, um, but one of the people that kind of keeps it going, um, and uh, also uh, was active in the Boston Users Group, one of the founders, but uh, have actually not been going recently, <laughs> it's, it's difficult. Um, but um, I'm actually, uh, one of my coworkers here is Russ, and um, one of the reasons he's here 
is something I'd like to talk about because I work for Verizon, which is a very large company, and um, Verizon really needs a users group to really build that, you know, the expertise and the muscle. And there's no reason why we can't have regular meetings, and of course they'd be on WebEx and <laughs> teleconference, but that's again, that's fine, because that's what the women of, uh, women of OpenStack meetups are. We do bi-weekly uh, uh, On her WebEx. <laughs> what? On your WebEx. <laughs> yes, on my WebEx, yes. Thanks, Verizon. <laughs> yes. Um, and we can really start doing things like, um, you know, Introducing OpenStack, I have done a little bit within Verizon, but I think we can really expand it. So. Uh, my name is Gary Kevorkian. I'm with uh, Cisco. I run the OpenStack LA group. Uh, my co-organizers that just joined me about a month or so ago is Jessica. She's back there. Uh, we also just achieved official OpenStack user group status about two months ago after a little bit of fighting and arguing. Long overdue. <laughs> uh, just over, uh, surprisingly enough, over a thousand members in the LA group um, see a lot of interest in OpenStack within the entertainment community uh, with all, this, with all the uh, production studios that are there. And um, I actually got into OpenStack uh, through the original company I worked for prior to joining Cisco, which was MetaCloud. We were acquired uh, about two and a half years ago, so I took over the OpenStack LA group from actually Mike Perez, who was the Cinder PTL at the time, but he was moving to Northern California, so he was looking for someone to take over his ownership of the group, and it fell to me, and I've been running with it now for a little over three years. Okay, awesome, and um, I'm Lisa Marie Amphi. Most people call me Lisa. Um, I uh, run the San Francisco Bay Area user group. We have a little over 6,000 members. Um, it was one of the first, it was the first OpenStack user group to start and to run meetups, so that's one of the reasons. And you're bigger than Boston, but not by much. How many members do you have? Well, actually, I'm not sure at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, and to be I fair. I think you're, you're absolutely the biggest one. Because <laughs> we looked at them all, and um, Seattle was second, and thank Gary's down in LA was third, and um, not to be counting. But the, uh, I, to be fair, the, a lot of those 6,000 members are not located in the San Francisco Bay Area since we did a lot of online things and I always do record the meetups and, and put, the, um, put the recording out there on the calendar and try to live stream it whenever I can. We have a, a quite a wide uh, an international <laughs> following as well. So, um, so a lot of members from around the, around the globe, which is a really cool thing. I'm also the U.S. OpenStack Ambassador. I think after running this meetup for so long, they just the foundation said, you should do that too, also, in your free time, also do that. Um, and so, but I'm really proud that the first thing I did as ambassador is make the well-deserving San Diego user group an official user group, and one of the second things I did was, was go after LA, that was also very long overdue. Um, there's a lot of user groups out there, if you, if you are running one and you don't have a official status, it's not that hard to get it. Um, we'll turn your gray OpenStack logo to a red one on the official page. Um, hey, Bruce, how are you? And we'll, um, <laughs> And we'll look after you. So um, my picture is a little fuzzy. I was just thinking that that's post meetup, Lisa. After yeah. <laughs> uh, after a little bit of whiskey. Um, but uh, those are our Twitter handles. So um, oh, I did promise. If you have a question and you were too shy to ask it, I, I did promise you could uh, tweet it up there, and we will uh, try to catch it. Um, so, although my phone's been going crazy today, so if it gets too annoying, I'll, I'll not do that. Um, you'll just have to shout it out. Uh, but keep the conversation going. This session doesn't have to stop when this session stops. You can tweet us anytime, and we're all here for you, and um, tag us all, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get you answers, and we'll keep the conversation going. So, a um, couple of people struggled in. Who here, if you don't run a user group right now, or you're interested in running one in the very near future? Oh, man, let's know where we ever bring it, because we would, we would be writing your name down right now. Um, all right, so the first question I'm going to ask our, our, our lovely folks here is, what role do you see the user groups playing as OpenStack becomes more mainstream? Because I think we can now say at seven years old, um, OpenStack is, or you can't even argue it's not enterprise ready, it's being run and proven, and the demo Beth showed on main stage yesterday is also validation of um, how fantastic this technology is and, and how stable and how scalable it is and all that. So I think we can now not argue whether it's mainstream or not um, and just say it is. And uh, so what role do you think the user groups are, are going to play now that this technology is, has been adopted so much and is so mainstream? 
Would you like to start, John? So, so maybe I'll argue with you on whether or not it's mainstream. Okay. Um, <laughs> I thought we were done with that. So I actually run multiple user groups and because I find that people are looking for cloud computing. They want to do cloud computing. So they find my user groups because they're doing searching for cloud computing, not necessarily that they're doing searching for, for OpenStack. They come in, they want to do cloud computing, and then we basically show them that OpenStack is a way of doing cloud computing. So I see the, the regional user groups as being sort of a grassroots movement, getting in new people that have never heard of OpenStack before and showing them, hey, this can solve your problems. This, this is really a, the cloud, uh, cloud computing platform that you need. And then things like OpenStack Days and the OpenStack Summit are really for people that are using OpenStack and want to get to the next levels. So you get, you get the smaller groups. It's more personal. Uh, it's, it's less intimidating than coming to a summit. It's less expensive. Right, you come in, it's got sort of a regional flavor to it. Maybe it's a, an office or a location that they're used to going to anyways, so they, they can show up. I, I try and move my, my uh, groups around, so it's... Aren't they free? Yes, they're <laughs> free, and we, you know, we serve, serve some pizza as well. Yeah, um, free with pizza. <laughs> right, and, and that grassroots movement gets new <laughs> users in, and basically about 80% of the people that come to my user group have never even heard of OpenStack before. And really, they, they want to learn about cloud computing. Um, and so it's some topic that meet up, and it's not necessarily a pure OpenStack topic. It's you know WordPress on the cloud. It's IoT on the cloud. And guess what? The cloud happens to be an OpenStack cloud. So while they're learning about WordPress, guess what? They're learning about OpenStack. It opens their eyes. Containers on OpenStack. Right. That's a good one. Right, because the infrastructure is sort of boring. Right? <laughs> but you add an application on top of it that then, then you draw in an audience and get people in. So 80% new members each time, but do people come back? Yeah, yeah, people come back, so they, they start to get, get involved to it, and you know, since it is a community, you get people, you know, you get that yeah. connection, a local connection, and that draws, draws people back as well. But it's, you know, people are busy and, San Diego, it might not seem like a big town, but people who live in the northern part of San Diego tend not want to come to the southern part and vice versa. So as I move around, maybe people might not show up every time, but they'll show up one time in three. Um, and, and sometimes I have to repeat sessions as well. So I'll do a session in the northern part of San Diego and then again in the southern part of San Diego to, to make sure I pull in the audience. Okay, you guys want to talk about women of OpenStack on this one? Actually, I want to talk about something that, that uh, John said, which is that um, I found, uh, this is, doesn't apply to women of OpenStack so much, but to the Boston OpenStack users group, which is that we have a very high percentage of new users every time. Um, and uh, that's actually a problem um, because the people who are well versed in OpenStack aren't necessarily going to want to continue coming back if 50% or more of the audience is new users. So how do you deal with that? Um, and for a while, and, and I have to admit I haven't been active recently with the, with the current um, version of it, um, but for a while what we were doing is we have sort of introductory you know, we'd start it with an introductory session every, every time, and it would run for like half an hour or something, um, and during the pizza. Um, so people could come, you know, starting at 6.30, and if they were new, they could get the introduction, and then the people who weren't interested in the introduction could, you know, hang out and do the pizza and, um, you know, and schmooze thing, and then follow with the main event, which would be more appropriate to, you know, sort of a general audience or people who have open tech experience. So we bring in, um, we actually brought the uh, uh, CTO of Docker when Docker was like, you know, tiny little three-person company. Um, he came and talked to talk to us and uh, about what Docker was doing and it was pretty interesting and and um, uh, uh, new DB and we've we've brought in a bunch of little startup company you know CTOs or CEOs of little startups they're always happy to come and talk to you <laughs> uh, and and of course they're always doing some really something really interesting which is going to be interesting to the to the more experienced users so you really have to balance uh, that that uh, mix of audience to, to really build the people to come back. And, and part of the reason I stopped going to the Boston one, other than it moved to downtown and I work out in the suburbs, 
Uh, and again, for a while, we moved around so that we would hit different, different groups. Um, is, is, um, is that it, it, there wasn't as many you know, sort of interesting things for, for me to, to, to go to. And the person who runs it currently is not local, so that makes it even worse. <laughs> so, um, From my standpoint, I think I'm going to try to address your sort of core question, which was how do we sort of focus content? And I think that really is the big part of mm -hmm. trying to facilitate adoption through the user groups. And, you know, for many, many months doing the doing my meetup there, they tended to be very technical deep dives into, you know, under the hood with Neutron and uh, networking this and that. And we've really started to try to focus on, in recent months, more around use cases and what mm. people are doing on top of OpenStack, sort of like John was saying, it's like, it's down there, just trust us, but here's what you can do with it. And I think those are the things, those are the topics that are really starting to resonate mm. with people because you also, part of those talks, what you get a lot of are sort of those lessons learned mm. stories that, you know, I know that I think in Barcelona someone gave a talk called Broken Stack. Oh, well, that thought, was a fantastic talk. Which I thought talk. was awesome because it was, it was basically, <laughs> don't let this happen to you. Here's what we learned by doing this. And I think that sort of content shift from continually doing deep dives and technical and technical talks and i'm not saying that they don't have a place at the meetup but i think that there's a balance that we need to achieve between those technical talks and the use cases we just did one uh, actually our last meetup was focused exclusively on use cases and it really resonated really well with the audience the other half of the adoption point, and I think it comes to John, what John was talking about, about new members coming in over and over and over again, is that what I'm seeing from a lot of my groups recently is that I've got existing engineers, existing developers coming in, and they're really trying to figure out where to place their bets on the future of their careers. Mm -hmm. Am I, do I need to learn OpenStack basics? Should yep. I be learning AWS skills? Okay, I know I said it. Um, uh, should I be um, building my Kubernetes skills? What should, you know, where should I focus? And I'm finding that a lot of the people, especially new coming to our meetups, are really sort of looking to where they should be investing their, their you know, sort of their education and their skill set. Right. Those new users, when people first find out, I, I get people who show up and they say, yeah, I, I took a look at OpenStack, I tried to install it, it didn't work, <laughs> and, and then I gave up. And I'm like, okay, well, that's the wrong approach. Come into a user group, use OpenStack, find out what it's all about, and then once you've mastered that, then go back and work on installing yeah. OpenStack. I, I think that's a key point of what the user, what the user groups need to be, is just yeah. give. And I'd like to talk about the, the, the career people, because in the Boston user group, we get a lot of people um, they're either, you know, some of them are working, some of them are not, right. um, but they're, they're definitely looking to build some career skills, and they're looking to see if, if OpenStack skills are something to be worth investing in. We actually periodically host the DevOps LA group in the same facility where I would do OpenStack LA, and the moderator of that group, he starts every meetup with who's looking for work. Yeah. And, you yeah, know, I do you, too. You know, yeah. and, and it's great because it really, those are the groups that I really have to push out the door at the end of the evening because everybody's busy networking with each other, trying to, you know, exchange a business card, here you go. But I thought that that was a very unique approach, with, especially within that community, just starting off the day with who's looking, who's searching. I say it the other way, though. I say who's hiring. Because everybody, there's, people always look for OpenStack admin, and people don't always want to admit if they're you know, looking for work, but um, or to have put them, put them on the spot. But if you say who's hiring, and then I tell people to leave their hands up, and then say, okay, look around the room now. If you are looking for work, go and talk to one of those people during the the, the networking session, um, and that's a, kind of a less in, invasive way to, <laughs> to connect people. Um, but you know, kind of back to the the different levels, uh, we didn't get a lot of 
beginners for a while um, in the Bay Area. We kind of had the um, people sort of knew what they wanted to do with OpenStack. Um, we, we were separating the meetup out where we had an advanced and a beginning session and we were kind of doing it every other I run two meetups a month and that's how we used to do it, advanced beginner. And then it, it just became where everybody wanted to be and everyone. So I found if you just really publish the agenda very, very clearly of what you're going to talk about, then you don't get that, you get the right level and all of our meetups tend to be pretty technical. Um, but then since I started doing more meetups on containers, now people are coming because of Docker and because of Kubernetes and they don't know as much about OpenStack. So I am getting a crowd now that um, gets a little bit lost when we start getting to the OpenStack part of it if we, uh, if we are talking about OpenStack at all. Um, but speaking of content, we always get asked as, as user group organizers, um, you know, how do you get the presenters? Where do you find the good content? What is it that draws the audience? What should the content look like? How technical should it be? Um, so uh, let's start at the other end. Gary, you want to wow. start with that mm -hmm. one? Okay. Um, actually, that was like my greatest fear when I, took over the, when I took over the group. Not only was I new to running the group, I was relatively new within the OpenStack community, didn't have a lot of connections. Um, I remember going to sleep at night after meet up in March and waking up the next morning and going, oh my God, I've got 30 days to find a speaker for April. Um, and it really can be kind of a daunting task. Um, the, gr the great thing is that the meetup is a great network and the people in the meetups will know people and they will know people. Um, I think one of the other great things about the meetup.com website, although I have my own issues with its limitations, is by looking at your member list, you can see the other groups that they're involved with. And you can reach out to those groups and find, you know, speakers. OpenStack has just created, I mean, relatively recently, a speakers bureau where you can go and find people to speak on specific topics. And that's been a great resource. But um, yeah, that, that's always a challenge, but it's, through the people you work with and the people you know, you generally can find some pretty compelling content. Yeah. And if you guys are ever, you know, starved for content, like I said, if you go through the calendar of our SF Bay OpenStack user group, um, I leave all the content up there. I leave the presentations and the, um, and we just started a YouTube channel. Um, and so you can always see the videos. Those speakers, some of them traveled to come and speak at our meetup. They'll travel to speak at yours. So, um, you know, ping one of them or ping me if you need an intro and we can also connect you with good speakers. Um, look at local uh, conventions that are coming into your town and and if, if you live in a town that has a, a conference center um, and, you know, if there's a, a, a container world or a Docker con or something, maybe you can grab a speaker uh, that's coming into town. So there's, there's lots of ways to, I'm lucky I live in the Bay Area, there's like just a lot, there's no short, people ask me to speak at the meetup <laughs> rather than the other way around. Um, but do you have this problem? Because you, you publish your calendar way out. I publish it like yeah, I'm very out. impressed by that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why I keep the calendar so far out is because I was exactly in the same boat and I couldn't sleep at night going, oh, geez, I got to do another meetup in 30 days. But yeah, when I started it, it was like, oh, I got to figure out. I had twice the problems because I had to find a speaker and content, but then I also had to find a location every month, yeah. right? And so, you know, when you're doing this <laughs> off, off the ground, um, finding the location was tough. So um, it's a lot of networking. It's a lot of going out. It's finding out who are the companies in town that are running an open stack and that are going to be somewhat sympathetic and, and want to help out. Um, it's uh, co-working spaces. I mean, this is sort of the latest thing. Everyone's joining a co-working space. So talking to the co-working spaces, they've got people there that are involved. Uh, they're also happy to lend out their space too. So I'll jump around and have uh, presentations of co-working spaces. Um, I take content, like sometimes there are labs at the OpenStack summits. So I'll take those and bring them back and do them. If I have a vendor coming in and giving a talk, um, I'll find out what's the, what's the talk about. Can we do a little bit of topic beforehand? Um, universities, so in San Diego, we've got the San Diego Supercomputing Center. They use OpenStack and part of their cloud. Um, so I had them come in and one guy gave a talk on uh, their storage system. So we did, uh, you know, we did a storage uh, hands-on lab before he spoke and he was impressed about that. So um, yeah, it's networking. Uh, I try to um, try to keep an archive of ideas that I can sort of 
app. And, and every time I put together a workshop, I put it up in Git. So you can go to github.com slash OpenStack San Diego and all the workshops and all the presentations and all the lab material I keep online. Really, my hope is that other user groups can, can leverage that um, and, and start using you know, those things within their own presentations. I'm hoping that the foundation can help with that as well, build out some good, solid content for the novice level. Um, and then also I reach out to public cloud providers. So OVH and uh, what's the other one? But um, uh, they're happy to donate uh, credits. So when people come in and want to use a, a cloud, I can give mm -hmm. out credits for them. And we'll do tutorials on, on using that. That is super cool. Well. I want to come back to that a, a little bit later, just like the, those extra things that you do and that you've gone out on your own to, to do. Um, but as you can tell, John's content, it's pretty technical, what he puts together. Um, San Francisco Bay Area as well, I found that works well for us. It sounds like you left the Boston Group because it wasn't technical enough. Yeah. Um, and you know, Gary, you probably have more vendors speak uh, than, than we do. Um, so what do you do to make sure they don't do a vendor pitch necessarily or a commercial and that the content is technical enough that the users are, are happy about that? Nothing gets presented without a screening. Everybody sends, everybody sends an abstract. All the content is pre-approved. And the interesting thing is that my members won't take it. They will, they've shut down a couple of presenters who started to stray off the, the you know the presentation that they originally He's submitted. Like hearing, hearing oh no, they're, they'll, no, they'll be like, wait, this isn't what we came for. Thanks for the yeah, pizza, yeah. but uh, you know, hey, what's wow. going on? But no, my my group is uh, very very sort of marketing centric or mar marketing sensitive, excuse me, okay. and they they recognize a pitch when it's coming right at them. So well, there's usually a kind of a dead giveaway. The title of the person who shows up. If it's the right. director of marketing, he's not likely to do a technical you know, talk. Having spent a, a career in marketing, I, I, I am very sensitive to that because I, I'm very good at gauging who the audience is. And if it's not a, you know, I, well, I never have a marketing pitch. This is not how I'm wired. But, um, but I, I don't throw anyone out just because their title. Because I've met some real, and depending on the company too. Yeah, you, know, you talk about marketing team, J Frog, company, or yeah. of, you know, some yeah. of the startups, and the the team is very technical and they'll keep it very devy focused. Um, but what Gary said. You'll lose your audience in a heartbeat if you if they're getting sold to, or if there's a commercial that they're getting pitched. Um, and so we're also very clear that that doesn't happen. It's happened to us a couple times, but then those presenters are never invited back because you do you lose your community. So as a community manager yeah. and organizer, we we, we make sure. I do want to talk about them. women of OpenStack because um, so w we actually have content that is not technical particularly. Um, and that's deliberate, actually. So what we're doing, in addition to the things that we do at the summits, is that um, once we, we have meetings um, twice a month, it's actually every two weeks, but whatever. Um, and every other meeting, we do, uh, we do some kind of presentation. And what we do typically is we focused it on career development or mentoring or something along those lines to give people those softer skills that they need. We, we, you know, we feel that there's plenty of opportunities to get um, those hard skills in the technical skills, you know, in OpenStack, wherever you can get them at the, you know, at the at the meetups there in person. And so we've been focusing on the, you know, developing your confidence and their soft skills that you really need, particularly women, unfortunately, particularly need to make make it in in, in a technical career. Yeah, we have a lot of mm. mentorship that yeah. takes place within the groups, and actually that's one of the things that's been fun to watch over the course mm. of, you know having someone come in a meetup eight months ago and said, I've never heard of OpenStack before, but I'm interested in what do I do, to friendships building over the course yeah. of the months. And, you know, I sat down with Bob and he helped me, you know, go through all these different courses. And, you know, these, these are now OpenStack engineers and they walked in the door not knowing mm -hmm. what OpenStack was, but they were just curious. Yeah. All right, so since I didn't see anyone raising their hand saying they were dying to start a new group, um, I think I'll skip the question about getting started. But in case anyone was too shy to raise their hand, there are, there are resources out there, and you can ask us about those um, through the foundation or ambassador programs. And um, we just, uh, if you have a group in your area, we encourage you to join that. Please do not start a new one if there already is one. <laughs> Forking a user group is an absolutely terrible thing to do, just like forking OpenStack would be or anything else. Um, but let's talk about um, 
setting agendas and expectations and because um, I think we have about 10 minutes left if I'm seeing that correctly. Um, so some of the yeah, OpenStack growth areas and I want to, is that right, 10 minutes? We'll just check. Everybody I, think left. I think technically we're till 420. 340 to 4. Okay, so 11 minutes. Um, no, it's okay. 420 now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have one minute. <laughs> one minute. Oh, okay. Should so, we take questions? I'm sorry, I didn't see him. Exactly. Were you like telling Let's us? Let's take questions. Minutes? Okay, we can do that. Well, my first question is for Beth, because I really do want her to talk about this, because it's kind of one of the reasons I have her on the panel. Um, just about the, like, the edge technologies Oops. and the setting the growth areas, because we're talking about how we're growing the adoption of OpenStack mm. through user groups and the roles of the user groups. So, what are those growth areas? We're seeing so much of it in telecom. And I want um, Beth to, to talk about some of that. Sure. Um, so the telco community has really embraced OpenStack in a big way, and there's a lot of telcos here. And as I found out, there's about 100 people from Verizon <laughs> attending this conference, which I actually am totally shocked about because I had no idea. Um, we're a big company. You know, there's 160,000 of us. So, um, so that's not surprising that I wouldn't know everybody. But um, so. Any of the, uh, so I think um, what I'm finding is the big growth areas are kind of hidden um, because they're not the public clouds. You know, HP failed and a couple of the other uh, open, open clouds, you know, Dream Cloud and public some of those clouds, are kind of yeah. public clouds yeah. specifically have kind of gone away. Um, and so um, the, the new emerging thing are private clouds in a really big way um, and private clouds that are you know, particularly in the telco world, are they're huge. They're really at scale. And edge computing, I just came off um, a Birds of the Feather meetup that, um, that, the, the, that Jonathan Price, um, he literally said, he was in the meeting and he said, oh, I figured about 10 or 15 people would show up and, and over 60 people crammed into that room um, to talk about edge computing, the use case, and you know, what that means. And, and uh, so those are really growing areas. And, it, and they're technically very complex and difficult. So I think what's really going on here is that OpenStack is being adopted by companies that want to use it in ways that you can't use. Like, like Amazon, you can go to Amazon, but you know, Amazon comes in one flavor fits all. You know, it does what it does. It's great at what it does. But if you want it to do something else, oh, you wanted it in chocolate. Well, the only vanilla, I'm sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> All clouds are vanilla as far as we're concerned. Uh, so OpenStack really has the opportunity for you to do chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, cherries on top. Um, and that's a real powerful for companies that, that want to stand up private clouds. So. Okay, and I would say you could say the same thing about containers as well. Yeah. You know, we've done a yeah. lot of hands-on workshops in containers. I know you've done containers and a lot of other open source technologies as well in your meetup. Right. Um, is there anyone in particular you think is super important to focus on? Uh, technologies on top of OpenStack. Um, you know, if you want to get widest adoption, uh, I, I would, things, things that are people are running on Amazon, typical workloads that uh, people use on a daily basis. Uh, I did a workshop that was IoT devices, you know, so mm -hmm. rather than yep. having to do uh, hardware devices, you simulate them in, a, in an OpenStack cloud yep. and start up multiple of them and tie them together. Uh, automation, how you can use OpenStack to tie multiple components of OpenStack together to create a, an end solution too. A lot of people don't think about that. They don't realize that, hey, I can use some of the object storage. I can use some of these other things to create one component ties too. you know you can stand up a swift storage and and use no other components mm -hmm. so and that's that's very and swift is a you know pretty darn good storage system <laughs> i mean i think to me the thing again driving sort of adoption mm -hmm. is just watching what happened at this summit versus previous summits mm -hmm. with the addition and inclusion of all the other tech, mm. all the other ecosystem technology, and really, I think that's something that is probably a little overdue. Mm. But learning that cloud native and open daylight and open, open NFV and all these other things can really all sort of play together in the sandbox and share their toys. And everybody, can, you know, there's plenty of opportunities for everybody. But the fact that OpenStack started to promote this event as the open infrastructure event, I think, was a big step in that sort of 
helping everybody sort of understand all the different things that are out there that you can right. use to build yeah. your clouds. And it's not, if you do this, you can't do that. Yeah. And that's, a, I think that's a big right. piece. That is beautiful. And I'll just I'll leave you guys with a th the notion of um, kind of redefining what, it, what success in OpenStack looks like. Because we, we hear this all the time, you know, is OpenStack going to succeed? Is it going to fail? And as, as user group uh, organizers and community architects, we, we feel responsible. Um, but I think you've seen also at this summit, summit uh, Thierry is going to have a talk tomorrow, I think, about, you know, should Stackalytics go away? We've, the things we've used to I define to success in OpenStack yeah. in the past and counting, you know, commits, lines of code and, and vendor contributions um, just is going away. So just think about different ways to define what success means in OpenStack. And I think you can look at a lot of really successful user groups um, and some very successful technology that was showcased on the, in the keynotes today and throughout the entire summit and see that we have really changed the, the definition of success in OpenStack. So thank you all for coming. We're here. That's us. Keep the conversation yep. going and um, tweet us feedback, good, bad, all of it. Um, and, you know, come and say hi when you come to our town. Come to our Thanks group. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Everybody. Thank you.